Each of my sculptures has a mathematical story underlying it, which I hope gets people aware of the creative and fun side of math. Or just ignore that and enjoy these sculptures for the geometric aesthetic. Structure, pattern, and symmetry are universals which anyone can appreciate. I just finished making this sculpture, Super Fragis, which I find particularly cool, so let me try to explain it to you. There are two interconnected aspects to it. The outside has five-sided spiral openings, and on the inside is a weaving of six regular pentagons. The pentagons don't touch each other. Every pair is linked, like two links in a chain. You can see how the pentagons float in their relative positions without touching. But how could you do that in a sculpture? Here's a physical model I made of the six interlocked pentagons. It comes apart, and it's a challenging puzzle to assemble, but that's another story. For now, just notice that I scale these aluminum bars to exactly touch each other so the six pentagons support each other in the proper relative position. You can make tall or fat bars which support each other, but I wanted six thin pentagons not touching. The pentagons are disconnected, so they won't hold their relative positions and gravity would make them collapse. But in Superfragis, the pentagons are thin and they do float in a symmetric arrangement. Now ignore the inner pentagons for a minute and look at the outer part of the sculpture. What's interesting is that this is also made of disconnected components. There are five separate parts with space to move relative to each other. These outer parts form the same structure as this compound of five regular tetrahedra. In this paper model, the struts are scaled to exactly touch each other, so parts support each other in the relative positions and gravity doesn't collapse it. But in Superfragis, the tetrahedra don't touch each other. If I only made this outer part, there would be five loose components. Now incidentally, I made these tetrahedra edges curved, and they meet at right angles like the corners of a cube, but none of that helps them stay in position. So what does keep the sculpture together? Each of the five tetrahedra has six edges, making 30, and each of the six pentagons has five edges, also making 30. And interestingly, I can position these two floppy structures so their 30 edges overlap and join together into 30 identical X-shaped components. One pentagon edge and one tetrahedron edge make a unit. 30 identical parts like this go together to make five tetrahedra and six pentagons simultaneously. The two floppy structures hold each other in place to make a rigid combination. It works because the floating tetrahedra want to fall apart into five pieces and the floating pentagons want to fall apart into six pieces. They can't agree on how to fall apart, so they end up staying together. A lovely principle. To really understand Superfragis, you'll want to make your own version. My wooden one is a one-of-a-kind sculpture, so I've also made an affordable snap-together plastic version. These 30 parts are laser cut very precisely, so they hold together with a friction fit. Five snap together to make a pentagon, along with some extra stuff sticking out, and six parts can snap together to make a regular tetrahedron, again with some extra stuff. And if you're clever, you can snap all 30 pieces together. When done, you'll have a beautiful sculpture and an interesting mathematical story. Be sure to show people how the six floating pentagons and the five floating tetrahedra connect to each other. I hope you enjoy it. Super Frabjus.